So I'll just give you some quick background bio information. Um, Karina Garrick is current, she currently resides in Halifax, Nova Scotia. She is a coach and arranger and recently chaired the Sweet Adeline's Arranger Certification Program Task Force. Karina is a judge, a master director, a member of the international faculty and the tenor of the 2012 International Comp Competition Quartet called Martini. I think you remember them. She also serves on the Sweet Adeline's Education Direction Committee and the Pitch Pipe Editorial Review Board. So Corina is very busy. She's a former associate director of Lionsgate Chorus and a former musical director of West Coast Harmony Chorus, both in Region 26. And I welcome you, Corina. Thank you. Oh, I love the applause. That's very nice. We miss that, don't we? <laughs> Who was that recording we were just listening to? That was a Pentatonix cover of uh, exactly. Esposito and Love the Shape of You off their brand, their newer album. It was all a cappella, wasn't it? That last medley of everything. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yep. It was wonderful. It was a cappella, but we knew it wasn't barbershop, didn't we? We knew it wasn't barbershop. And that's what this class is about. This class is a called How Barbershop Is It? And uh, kind of inspired by uh, something I hear occasionally. I'll sit in an audience with someone and a quartet will or a chorus will sing something and they'll say, oh, that's not barbershop. And I'm just like, well, isn't it? Is it? Uh, what makes it barbershop? How barbershop is it? Is barbershop really a yes or a no thing or does all a cappella music kind of share attributes and could we do a little class on how barbershop is that anyways. As a music judge, I get a lot of uh, requests from competitors sending me music and saying, can I compete with this? And my answer is always, sure you can, but here's, here are the hallmarks of barbershop and here's where it's strong and here's where it strays. And depending on how you perform it and the level you perform it at, you may choose to compete with it or you may not. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to share my screen because, of course, it's the age of PowerPoint and Zoom. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to share my sound. Do I need to optimize screen sharing for video clip? I do have a couple of those. Yes, you do. Uh, check I both. Yeah. Check it all. Okay. I'm sharing now. Can you see my screen? And can you see me? Because I can't see anything but my face yes. anymore. Okay, excellent. All right, so feel free to interrupt me, ask questions, whatever you need to do. I know I have a little less than an hour, so we're going to move. <laughs> um, how barbershop is it? I want to go to my next slide. Why can't I go? Oh, there we go. I'm screen sharing. It's telling me about things. Okay, go away. All right. So how barbershop is it has to start with a tiny little review of the music category. So this is the part where I think some of you are going to have to turn off your caveman brains and do a bunch of compassionate self-talk because we're going to talk a little bit about music theory, but I'm going to try to make it palatable and I'm going to gloss. So those of you who are interested in music theory, um, I'm not going to go as deep as you might like, uh, but I'm going to, uh, we have to cover a little bit of it just to talk about what barbershop is. So the music category, the primary focus of our category is the performance of a song arranged in four part harmony barbershop style. So when I'm evaluating a performance from the pit, I'm, I'm looking at the musicality of the performance. I'm looking at what you brought to sing. And then I'm looking at how you lift it off the page in the barbershop style. Now, Oh my gosh, how come my clickers aren't working? I don't know. Okay, so 30% of my category is what you bring. And 70% is how you do it. So that used to be a very different mix in the 1990s, but now it's just 30% really that's related to the song and the arrangement that you sing. So at its heart, my category is just about what you choose and how you lift it off the page. And today, we're going to talk about that 30%, the song and arrangement part, and how barbershop is it. 
I want to also remind you that there is a JCDB online, the Judging Category Description Book. So if you're interested in the judging categories and learning more about this segment of the category, you can read about it. It's only 14 pages. It's amazing. Uh, and uh, feel free to look that up. Okay, so under song and arrangement, we've got things like merit as barbershop material, form, melody, lyrics, arrangement, harmonization, voicing. That's what we're going to talk about today. And then we're going to listen to a bunch of examples. So here's some examples of a cappella groups, how barbershop is Main Street. They're the men's champions from a few years back, Tony DeRosa. How barbershop is pentatonics. We just heard that. We know it's not barbershop when we hear it. How come we know? How barbershop are the Cracker Jails? 1957 champs, Rene Craig's quartet. How barbershop are the Mills Brothers? Their father was a barbershopper, actually owned a barbershop and sang a barbershop quartet. And you hear that in their music when you listen back to it, you hear the chords. How barbershop is Jimmy Fallon's ragtime gals. They do a parody of barbershoppers. Have you ever seen that? Some of them are pretty funny. Justin Timberlake singing sexy back <laughs> in barbershop style. I mean, so you can cram things into the barbershop style, but how barbershop is it? So like I said, when I sit in an audience, sometimes, sometimes it's a little blurry, you know, the barbershop. And sometimes it's crystal clear that it's barbershop. Why is that? So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Here we go. This is where you've got to do the positive self-talk and, and just listen and know that you can understand this. This is the mystery part of the music category for lots of people. So we do know a barbershop is unaccompanied, close harmony. So the chords, we sing a lot of the time within an octave of each other. And we like that. We like that. We like the way it feels and the way it sounds to us. Uh, it's four-part vocal music. So we have bass, tenor, baritone lead. Gosh, it's been so long since I sung in the quartet. I can't remember the part names. <laughs> and the melody's in the middle. So that's a defining characteristic of barbershop. And that's different than a lot of the other parts. That's pretty easy to follow. We look for an interesting melody. The category actually uses that word, an interesting melody. Uh, so it moves around. Uh, we look for a lyric that's appropriate for general audiences. Uh, and the melody mostly lives in the diatonic scale. So that just means you're not going to see a lot of sharps and flats and natural signs that are outside of the key signature. Okay. We want it to mostly live in the scale. It's not super chromatic music. It's, it's pretty much uh, straightforward, shall we say. Uh, we look for the rhyming lyrics, metric unity. We're not going to talk a lot about lyrics today. So those are pretty easy to. Karina, I have a quick question. Yep. Could you could you not have a barbershop contestable piece where the melody was in the bottom or the top? It can't be there very long. So that's okay. part of the how barbershop is it, right? No, you couldn't be there for the whole song. That would be that would be very uh, that would be a weakening characteristic. Okay. If you expect that the melody's in the middle, the bass is the lowest voice, the tenor is the highest, and the baritone is working her way in and around. Yeah, good question. Uh, form. So this is where we start to get into some of the technical elements of barbershop. So popular song form is something we talk about in the music category. And that talks about the song being built in eight measure building blocks. So around uh, the early uh, 1900s, turn of the century, this song form became popular. And we look for a chorus. The chorus is the, the body of the song or the main part of the song, the part of the song with the hook in it that you would walk around humming. Uh, we look for the chorus to demonstrate melodic unity. And what that means is we recognize that these eight measure building blocks have a pattern associated with them. So if I use an example like Tired of Me, it's the first ballad I ever competed with in a quartet in 1989, <laughs> it goes, um, the first eight bars sound like this. Tired of me, tired of me, sorry is all you say. So remember what that sounds like. We're going to call that A. The first eight measure bars, we're going to call them A. Now let's decide, did the next eight measure bars sound like that or something else? Just like a toy, children enjoy, loved but then thrown away. 
that's different. We're going to call that B. So we've got an A and a B. And then we're going to sing the next eight bars. Somebody new look good to you. Happy I hope you'll be. I often wonder if she really means that. But that is sounded just like the first section, didn't it? There's a melodic unity we're looking for. So we got an A, a B, and an A. And then last eight bars, close it out. Darling, I love you still, and I always, always will. Though you grew tired of me. That was different from everything. So we're going to call that C. So there's a second option there, A, B, A, C. So you'll notice that in a lot of the barbershop contest songs that you see, and in a lot of a lot of other kinds of music as well, you'll hear melodic unity. As human social animals, we like repetition. We like familiarity. And that helps us get familiar with a chorus when we hear certain elements of it repeated. And we look for that in a strong song to arrange. All these things happen before we even arrange the song. So when we're choosing music to arrange, we look at these things. Harmonization. This is something you hear a lot about uh, when we're talking about barbershop. And these are the we talk about the big three in the music category. There's three chords that we particularly like. Our goal in arranging barbershop is to create overtones, right? We love overtones. We can hear them up this that fifth, sixth, the voice that happens above or sometimes undertones, things that happen below the chord uh, that create that buzz and that ring that we get so excited about and makes the hair stand up on our arms. Um, harmonization, we're looking for those big three chords in the song itself. So we want the major triad, that's, that is, let me see, nothing's working. Do, be, so, one, three, five, shouldn't have picked C, but there, that's a major triad. We also look for, we know this one really well, hello, 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 hello. That's the barbershop seven, which is really a dominant seven, but it's a, a, it's a chord that arranges really well in barbershop, and we like lots of those. So that's just the third with the seven on top. And then we can take that seven and we can add a nine. One, three, five, seven, nine. So we use that one a lot too. Those three arrange really well in a way that lets us reinforce overtone patterns and create when they're well tuned and well sung, open resonance, all that stuff, we can create those fifth, six notes above. That's why we love those. Now, a song can't be made up of only those three chord, kinds of chords because that, that gets a little dull and we need other chords. So we have 11 in our uh, music category, 11 chords that we name. The others are called secondary chords. So when we talk about the primary chords, we're talking about those three. So we're looking for those in good songs to arrange for barbershop. Now we get to the arrangement. So the chorus has to be there. So that tired of me part that I just sang to you, that was the chorus of that song. There might be a verse that goes in front of it. There might be an intro, there might be a tag, somebody might create a bridge, or there might be one that comes with the song that just sort of takes you somewhere else and then brings you back to the chorus. The arrangement structure, that's something that the arranger decides. Uh, the arrangement that I sang of Tired of Me, I think really only, oh yeah, there was an intro. You took the sunshine and you brought the sunshine into my heart. You made the whole world new. It's been so long, I can't remember the words, but there was an intro. I think it was a verse actually. And then we sang the chorus and then there was a tiny little tag. It was a pretty simple arrangement. Uh, but the chorus has to be there. Everything else is optional. And there are arrangements, we'll listen to one later, that's just a chorus. It's a great arrangement. Uh, so music judge listens to that. Uh, something else, when we think of barbershop, when we think of square barbershop or solid barbershop, every melody note is harmonized. Uh, that's true regardless of whether the singers are singing with the melody note or whether they're doing something else behind the melody note, but there's constant harmony behind the melody note. Solo passages are short, usually in strong barbershop, you know, the a cappella solo or a unison passages. We generally are hearing harmony on every note of the melody in strong barbershop. Uh, when I say homophonic, that's just um, harmonization with the melody. You'll also see the word homorhythmic, which means everyone's also singing the same words at the same time. So we've got aligned chords. 
Voicings is a more technical topic, uh, probably, and as you get into arranging, it's one of the first things that you learn about, but we need the lower voices in the chord, especially the bass, to be on, we need the bass to be on a strong chord element. And the reason we want that is we hear the most overtone, we hear the most other notes from that bass voice. And so that's gonna help reinforce the lock and ring that we're looking for in barbershop. So if the, if the chord is a C chord, whether it's a C triad or a C7 or a C9, we want the bass to be on the C if it's possible for the bass to be on the C. If not, the next strongest chord component is the five, the G. But generally speaking, you'll find basses are on roots and fives of chords because that helps to create the lock and ring. If you put the bass on the third, the third has an overtone pattern, natural overtone pattern that conflicts with everything. So it'll naturally be very difficult to get that chord to ring. You know, and we want the bass to be a big, a big sound, the loudest voice in the chord as well. And that's partly um, why as well. Karina, mm -hmm. is that because three is a minor harmony? It's because three has just a different set of overtones if you map them out or you look in the arranger's guide, they're mapped out in there, I think, somewhere. Uh, you can just see that they conflict. They don't reinforce each other. Whereas the one in the five, like if the octave is the first one, uh, like if a C goes to a C, a, in a G's overtone pattern, you'll eventually see the C. You won't see it too far off. So the, it, it, they will reinforce each other, whereas the E will not have that C in it for a long time. Thank you. That's a whole class. <laughs> I should write one about that. Uh, embellishments are a big part of the barbershop uh, characteristic. And we have embellishments in barbershop that are unique. You don't really hear them when you listen to the pentatonics or uh, take six or you hear some of them maybe, but things like echoes where we repeat little bits like to you, to you, that's very barbershop. Or the slides where we, we move from one chord to another, but we do it in a glissando. We do it so that we hear every note in between and we land on the next one. Um, things like patter, where the melody is singing something, but in the background there's some la da 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 kind of stuff going on that's not exactly what the melody is singing, but it's just different lyrics defining the chords. Um, so many, let's see, oh, bell chords. You know, bum, 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 very famous, the most famous bell chords ever, probably right there, but we use those occasionally. So there's embellishments. And in in the music category, they should be used for dramatic effect or or sometimes they have to replace the instruments that aren't there because this is an acapella art form. Okay, so there you go. That was that was the spinach part of this meal. Now you've eaten your greens. Hopefully that wasn't too bad, but that's, how we define barbershop in the music category. So now we wanted to look at how barbershop is it. So we're gonna to listen to a bunch of examples and um, we're gonna use this little checklist. So you can always, you can take a piece of paper and write down your little checklist if you like. There's those, those seven things, form, what is the form of the song? Is the melody interesting? And the lyrics, are they for a general audience and appropriate? Harmonization, is it mostly these big three, the triad, the seven, the nine, uh, homorhythmic, are we hearing mostly everyone all lined up singing together, chord, 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 chords are aligned, and then voicings, do we have a sense, it's a little hard, this one takes a little more learning maybe, but do you have a sense that the bass is on a strong foundational chord component? so that we can hear overtones. And then embellishments, are embellishments enhancing the story or are they taking over the story? And that might be one of the differentiators, I think, when we hear some of the really popular charts, I think, is there's uh, times when the embellishments just start of taking over the melody and you can lose the story or you can lose the song. Um, so let's, let's see. If you're feeling out of your depth on harmonizations, if you're thinking you'd like to have a song arranged or something, I, I even do this when people send me uh, arrangements to have a look at. I'll Google the song title with the word chords and you'll get a guitar chart or a ukulele chart, it doesn't really matter what it is, but you'll see the letters above the lyrics. Uh, so if you look for mostly major dominant seven and dominant nine chords, the symbols for that are 
the letter of the chord. So if it's a C major chord, one, three, five, do, mi, so, then you'll see the letter C all by itself. That says, yeah, that's a major chord. If you see a little M behind it, or, or it's a lowercase C maybe, that means it's a minor chord. So that's a secondary chord, not a, not a primary. Dominant sevens look like C7, and dominant nines look like C9 or D9, E9, F9, whatever the bass note is in the chord or the, the root of the chord. So that's uh, just sort of a little cheat sheet for looking at if you're interested to see whether the music that you're singing that is you're taking to contest. Is it, is it primary? Has it primarily got those big three chords in it? You can Google your song and see. Okay, let's do our first example then. Um, this is a recording of the Melodier singing Let Me Call You Sweetheart. So the first thing I want to do is let's work out what the form is. So we're going to go in eight bars. So here we have a 32 bar chorus. And there you can see that the chords are the harmonization C, F, A7, D7, G7. They look pretty good, don't they? So what's the form of this? Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. Let's call that. Section A. Now is the next one the same or different? Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. I can't see you, but I'm guessing you're saying it's different. So that's a B section. Here we go. The next, the next one on line B there. Keep the love like glowing in your eyes so true. We're going to call that A again. Even though it's slightly different at the end, it starts the same. So as a listener, we get this sense of repetition. So we've got an A, a B, and an A. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. we got a C. So here we have A, B, A, C. We like that. Melodic unity. Okay. Is it an interesting melody? Yeah, it is. I like it. It moves around, and it's got a nice peak at the, it's got a nice, the highest note is sort of reserved for the most important statement in the song, I'm in love with you, right at the end there. Uh, so pass, right? and it's oh, and there's very few accidentals. There's a couple, that's okay, but it's not super chromatic. It's mostly in the scale it's written in, and this is in the key of C, you can tell, because there's no um, accidentals in the key signature, and the first chord of C is usually a good clue too. Uh, the lyrics are G-rated, and they're rhyming. Okay, harmonization. What I said about the chords. Do you see mostly big three chords here? This is this is a major triad because it's a C all by itself. That's a major triad. That's a seven. Okay, it's pretty much all. There's not a single minor chord or anything that's that's weak here. So that tells me it's probably a pretty good candidate for arrangement. All right. So those are all the things that are just in the song, which is why I gave you the melody to look at. Now we're gonna to listen to the arrangement and tell me, do you hear that people are singing the same chord at the same time, pretty much all the time, most of the time? Do you hear that the bass, if you, if you are a bass or you are interested, have a look at these chords. If you can tell that the bass is moving from C, F, A, A, D, G, the names of these chords tend to be the bass notes. And in this arrangement, you will hear the bass moving. She'll move around, but she'll wind up on those notes. It's kind of interesting. So, Karina, there's one question that came up uh, from sure. Laurel. Uh, Aaron Dale's arrangements seem to have a lot of patter areas. In we're going to do an Aaron Dale arrangement. Yeah. Okay, good. We so are. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So she uh, she says, yet they're strong arrangements. So does it come down to execution when judging, or should somebody expect a better score from execution of a simplistic square barbershop song since there isn't difficult uh, difficulty factor figured in? Great question. Let's talk about that when we get to Deed I Do, because I'm going to play you Deed I Do. Yeah, which is an Arendelle chart, and we love Martini. We sing a lot of his charts. We love them. But, but we will talk about the embellishments because that's where. So in this one, listen to whether the embellishments are enhancing or taking over. This is Jim Martin's arrangement, by the way. I am dreaming to
okay, I'm not going to listen to the whole thing, just in the interest of time. But that's that's the bulk of it. Now he's going to take, he's just setting up a key change, which is a kind of embellishment. And then the, the second half is going to be a little more embellished than the first. But would you agree that part, pretty much everyone's singing everything together there? And the voicings, could you, could you hear where the bass was moving to the chord, the, the root of each chord generally? They'd move around, but she was really just following the chords. Yeah, there's one comment here. Very homorhythmic embellishments are used mostly to emphasize the important lyrics of the song. Exactly, yeah. So the embellishments are supporting the melody, yeah. And there's some there's a really great tear away at the peak where he takes advantage of that you know that high F in the melody and so it it this is pretty I mean you can't ask it's very barbershop <laughs> there's really nothing for me to write about as a music judge I would just have to write that's a, a great selection you know you're doing a great job of it okay uh, and he's written embellishments in it that let them showcase some of the things that they can do. And there were a couple of places where the bass walked away from the melody and then, she, then they came back, right? So it makes it a little, a little interesting. Um, the next example is, uh, I love this one, ambiance. It's a sin to tell a lie. And this one is an example of an arrangement that just has the chorus. That arrangement we just listened to had a verse in front of it, then the chorus, then there's a tag that we didn't hear. This is very short. We'll listen to the whole thing. Uh, it's just a little barn burner. Um, if we look at the chords, or if we look at the form here, um, and the chorus is, uh, let's start at, um, be sure it's true when you say I love you, it's a sin to tell a lie, A. Eh? Millions of hearts have been broken just because these words were spoken. I love you, yes I do, I love you, sounding A like again, if you break my heart I'll die, and then last eight bars, so be sure it's true when you say I love you, cause it's a sin to tell a lie, that's A, B, A, C, right, melodic unity, so we get those rep repetitions that we like, that make us feel comfortable with the melody, uh, primarily in the major scale, not a ton of accidentals, in this, again, we've got a few little sharps in there. That's okay. Um, the harmonization. Now we're seeing a few minor chords. Just for color, right? Uh, that's in the in the little intro that starts at A minor. And then in the body, in the chorus, primarily the big three, right? A C, G7, C, E7, really just moving around the circle of fifths, which we haven't talked about, but we don't need to. Okay, so let's listen to this. Tell me about the arrangement then. Homorhythmic, voicings, it's a based on a strong com chord component, and do the embellishments enhance? This is ambiance. You know it's a sin to tell a lie. Still you keep saying I love you. I do. It may be true. Shameless, awful sin to tell a lie. Don't make me cry. Cause if you break my heart, I'll die. I love that ending. I love that ending. That's a G. That's a, that's, that's a 
major triad chord and the bass is on such a strong component and she's high and loud and it's very exciting. Um, that actually has more than the chorus in it. I don't know what I was thinking. That's, that had an intro and then the chorus and then a little bridge, a minor bridge, secondary chords, more in that area, and then the chorus again. But the chorus is super solid in terms of its uh, harmonization. Did you hear mostly homorhythmic? Mostly everyone singing the same thing at the same time. The places where embellishments take that away, where there's a little bit of uh, like the bass moved away again for a moment, she had to take the melody because it's a rangy melody. That's a challenge in the song. Um, those create interest. But I think the key is, is not to stay in that for a long, 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 long time, you know, so they were just, they're just little interesting moments. And then we get back to the solid uh, barbershop. The voicings were strong again. Um, and the embellishments, I think were pretty, uh, just m moving the music along, These, uh, connecting embellishments, really, just to enhance and support and move things along. Any comments on that one? That's still very strong. It sounds pretty like a difficult one. To execute yeah. well. It, it's ambiance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the year that they won, I think, is around that. It's from a right. very, I it's wore really out my cassettes one. and bought the CDs. I wore out my cassettes. That's funny. Back in the cassette days. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is someone was asking about Aaron Dale arrangement. So we're going to listen to an Aaron Dale arrangement. Here is a very simple song called Deed I Do that you're probably familiar with if you've been in barbershop for any length of time. And if we look at the form, do I want you, oh my, do I, honey, deed I do, I do. That's A. We're going to sing it again. Do I need you, oh my, do I, honey, deed I do. So that is A again, right? Got A, A. I'm glad that I'm the one who found you. That's why I'm always hanging around you. That's different. That's the B section of the chorus. And then we go back and sing. Do I love you? Oh my, do I? Honey, did I do? Without, however it goes, uh, that is A again. So the form is, has melodic unity. We like that. And it's built in the eight bar chunks that we like as well for form. Uh, melody is all in the major scale. They're not an accidental in sight. And if you look at those chords, what do you see? A C, a C9, an F. An F minor, a secondary chord for color, uh, a C, a D7, a G7, but generally speaking, pretty strong in the barbershop world of the big three chords. If you Googled this song chords, you would say, oh, that probably could be arranged. I see the eight bar chunks and I see the, I see the chords that we're looking for. Now, this arrangement, there, there is a, an older arrangement that is pretty homorhythmic and strong barbershop for contest. This arrangement we see in contests sometimes too. Uh, it's a lot more challenging. It's fun to sing, uh, but it's not very homorhythmic. And the question I always ask myself in this arrangement and this style of arranging is, are the embellishments enhancing the melody or are they taking over the melody in some places? So let's listen to, to some of it at least. Um, I think we have time to listen to it. This is uh, this is my quartet Martini singing uh, Aaron Dale's arrangement of D.I. Do, an amazing arranger. Baby, I've just been thinking of all the reasons I would fall in love. I don't know why, but here's what I can say. Do, 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 do I love you? Well, oh my, how do I, honey? Indeed I do. Babe, you know it's true. And do I need you? Well, oh my, I do I, honey? Indeed I do. Only you do. What did your gut say about that right now? This is, sometimes my gut is what goes up first. Somebody like, oh, is this... There's sometimes when I hear the beginning of something, I think, well, that's barbershop. That's how I understand barbershop. And there's sometimes where I have to keep listening and think, where are the hallmarks? Where are the hallmarks of the barbershop style? And how often am I hearing them? 
What's your it, gut reaction right now? Well, it sounds more like a swing song. Uh -huh. with, um, some people wrote here, uh, higher difficulty factor, um, lots of push and pull, um, very the bass, fast. Up the bass metal, metal bass actually pulled me out of, out of. It didn't start in the barbershop, did it? Yeah. yeah. Because Shannon's got the ba doom 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 thing to do first. Yeah, exactly. And so it takes you a moment to come into, oh, this isn't starting as barbershop. It's starting as something else, a jazz piece, uh, which is probably more faithful to the original. Um, but uh, let's keep listening a little bit. And let's listen to the embellishments. Do, do, I'm glad that I'm the one who found you. Found you. That's why I'm always hanging round around you. Do, do, say, do I need you? Oh, oh my, I do I, honey. Here's another thing we talk about in, in the category sometimes. Is the arrangement still telling the story here? Or are we mostly hearing embellishments and arrangement play, where the arrangement becomes the feature versus the song? And which should be featured? Should it be about the song or should it be about the arrangement? Or does it even matter? I don't know. But he so um, there, there are a few comments here. Um, one person, Christine, said the syncopated rhythm throws me off. So I found myself expecting the unexpected and being more form focused. focused. Yeah. More, fun. Um, more focused. More um, focused. <laughs> the surprise is not being able to relax into the music. <clears throat> a strong a a story. 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 The story. Yeah, I, I think too. The story goes away for a while because now we're just we're riffing on the the fun of the embellishments uh, and and it is super fun but the question is is it is it still what we understand to be barbershop all right let's listen to a little bit more you now i'm glad that i'm the one who found you found you my baby that's why i'm always hanging around around you say do i Now we're not even disguising that we're not talking about the song anymore, right? Now we're just super having fun. So it goes from the, here's the song, to let's have fun with the song, to let's just have a big bold party of, of all kinds of things, that there's very little homorhythmic stuff going on in this area. And um, who was it? Uh, Jim and Renee. We were working with Jim and Renee once, and they were talking about coaching a group that, a chorus, I think it was, that wanted to take this into contest. And um, so they were trying to line it up more. But, but in the process of doing that, they were kind of ruining the experience. The, they were ruining the vehicle because the fun of this arrangement is that it is so jazzy, riffy, embellishment-oriented, show-offy, if you will. I mean, for, and it is definitely for higher level groups to sing, but it, it doesn't have a lot of the hallmarks. It, it, it doesn't um, reinforce a lot of the hallmarks of the barbershop style. So I would have to write about that anyways, up in my little corner of the sheet, I would have to write about sort of the ways that it is barbershop the song is definitely a strong, a strong song selection. The way that it's arranged has really veered off into another style while still having some elements of barbershop. So how barbershop is it? No, not as barbershop as the two we just listened to say. So uh, as long as you stick to barbershop chords, w why not have these kinds of embellishments because of how far out it goes rhythmically? 
I think because they start to obscure the message. And a lot of what we uh, do in barbershops, we're, we're trying to communicate a message and the message is disappearing here. But you know what, groups like GQ have competed with this and you know, scored a 666 with it. Like if you've got, if you've got the chops to pull it off, 70% of your music score is how you pull it off in the barbershop style, you can still do it. Um, it's just, if you're trying to assess whether um, it is a strong barbershop, uh, these are the things you need to think about. And like I usually say to groups, of course you can sing it in contests, but here's the list. What do you think how it, about how it fits the way barbershop is described in the music category? So there's a question here, hasn't Barbara, uh, sorry, what about if a song has a rhythmic bridge and, but returns to a more square form? That's a great point. So a lot of this is about how long you spend outside of the box. So solo passages, you know, uh, you could do eight bars of that and then return to something that's more solidly barbershop. I think the, the challenge with this arrangement is how long we stay away from what we understand as strong barbershop until it acts kind of morphs into something else, more of a jazz piece. So that's a great point. It is a matter of degree. And also um, Sue asked, hasn't barbershop evol evolved over the years? It has, it has, and it will continue to evolve a little, but it won't ever become something else. So still, if we're looking at the hallmarks, we're looking for certain hallmarks that tell us that it is barbershop. And, and this little list, those are, those are some of the hallmarks, at least how they're, how they're utilized. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely barbershop is changing. And I, I love that it's changing and I like that it's opening up more and everything and people do compete with this. Uh, the suitability is a whole nother section of the music category. So suitability talks about your skills and the thing that you're singing and whether there's a good fit. So this one, there's probably, just, there's not a lot of groups that, that would sing this one, for example. Maybe sometime I'll do a class that is simpler pieces that go from strong to weak and you won't find as much variation because generally uh, for uh, e easier groups, we're gonna keep people more together. We're gonna, for easier uh, music, we're gonna keep people more aligned. That's gonna be a little easier to hold together. This one, all four singers have to be pretty rhythmic. Right, and there's one comment here. The extreme rhythmic embellishments make you so conscious of the technical that it doesn't even matter what the lyrics are, which is why the message gets lost. Instruments that's could do right. this too. Right. Yeah, because that section we're just listening to, it yeah. didn't matter what the lyrics were. It's almost yeah. like a scat section right. almost. Right, it's a good, good comment. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. a hallmark of what? That's a hallmark of jazz. That's a, that's a whole different art form, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, this one's a marriage of the two. I, I love it, obviously, I love the arrangement, but it, how barbershop is it? Uh, here's another one that's an interesting one. Um, this is a very popular pop song. You were so beautiful. Joe Cocker did, and it was famous before that. I can't remember who. Um, you are so beautiful to me. Uh, you are so beautiful to me. Can't you see? You're everything I hope for. You're everything I need. I know that's the version I know. So that's A, A, B. You are so beautiful to me. It's not in the eight bar chunks that we're looking for, but I could call this an A, A, B, A form with four bar chunks. So let's, let's say that. Uh, the melody is rangy, very rangy, but primarily in the major scale, not singing a ton of accidentals. How about the um, lyrics are always fine. I never have to write anything. What do you think about the harmonization? The hook is the part of the song that we kind of think of first. It's often the title of the song. You are so beautiful to me. F, F major seven. F major seven is a jazz chord. I don't know if you can hear my little keyboard over there, but it's a, it, that's a very jazzy chord right there in the hook. That creates a, a weakness 
it's not an impossible weakness because after you've gone has a major seven right there in the hook as well. Back in when I joined the organization, that was considered weak and it was not really anymore. So talk about evolution. <laughs> it's placement of these weaker chords matters though. Uh, you are so beautiful to me. There's a G minor chord in there. And then back to the F major seven. So more secondary chords in this one. You can already see it's maybe not, it's not going to be as strong as Let Me Call You Sweetheart, but it could still be. Um, we're going to watch uh, this performance. I hopefully be able to see it. Uh, and I want you to think about the other three things on the checklist. Uh, homorhythmic, like how how much is the song sort of lined up, uh, the voicings, uh, whether the bass is on a strong chord component, and the embellishments. And then sort of just make some other notes about what, what strikes you uh, in this song in the barbershop art form. Uh, let me just get to the next. This is uh, Millie Blink. Got a couple of members of Salt in it. Wonderful group. I first found pure beauty in your precious smile. Like no other So that's an original intro, and that's pretty barbershop. So they've tried to, they've, the arranger has tried to barbershop it up by putting a barbershop intro on it and then doing a modulation so they can get into the key they need to be in for the chorus. You are so Bridge. In the darkest night, you're an angel from above, and it feels all right. Your heaven's gift to me. You are so beautiful. stop it there just because I gotta finish the class. Um, so it is primarily lined up. There's a few solo things. Um, the embellishments are interesting. The voicings uh, just it's just super stretched at that original bridge. And what I find is they've taken this beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, song um, with a not really terribly interesting melody, uh, but a beautiful lyric, and they tried to barbershop it by inserting those original pieces. This is an arrangement by Mo Field with Stockholm City Voices, and it feels more like the true song to me.
So I listened to that arrangement and I listened to the barbershop arrangement. And when I hear the barbershop arrangement, I hear the song struggling to fit what we're asking of it. Uh, I don't know you know, what were what were your thoughts? What were with the previous song? Was that contestable? The previous sample of this song? Yes. Yeah, that's a contest uh, that they sang. That is a contest song, and other groups mm. have as well. Yeah. Again, mm. Glow used to sing it as well. Glow Quartet. Uh, it's it's super challenging. Again, I keep picking these challenging ones, but uh, yeah, A level uh, groups have had a shot at it. A uh, couple of questions here. How far away from the original intent of the song is it okay to go? It's up to you. Um, me watching that, I preferred Mo Fields' arrangement of it because that felt more like the song to me being featured. When I watch, when I hear this arrangement, different groups singing it, I feel like the barbershop is layered on top of the song instead of arising out of the song. Does anyone else get a, a sense of that or have a different mm -hmm. thought? <laughs> Karina, did Mo use their version of this as their contestable piece or just an entertainment piece? That's an entertainment piece. Okay, yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, because that one's mostly ooing and the right. different things coming in and out in the melody mm -hmm. and yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually yeah. surprised that Millie um, Blink's version was contestable. It didn't seem or is it just a difficult? Well, then, so that's why I call the class, how barbershop is it, right? Yeah. So there's, there's form elements that are barbershop-like. Uh, the song is, does have a weaker chord, so that's probably something not working well for it. Um, the arranger did try to barbershop it up by putting an, an intro on it. Uh, that bridge is only for superheroes, I think, because it's very hard to make it sound good because uh, it's so vocally stretched. Um, the embellishments were barbershoppy, so there's always some barbershop in it, but it feels awkward, like you tried to shoehorn this song that didn't belong in the style into the style. So would it score well in the music category? Uh, it's 30% of the score, you know, it might be a few points difference because there are things in it that are barbershop and it's, it's being delivered in the style of barbershop, but no, it wouldn't score as well as say the three that we've just looked at. Karina, I think we're out of time. Yeah, we started a little late, that's too bad, but okay. <laughs> we will uh, move on um, and I'll just wrap. We won't watch the last one, but the last one is Footloose, and you can watch it on your own sometime. Uh, Lionsgate sang it in their finals. But this melody is, tonight I gotta cut loose, foot loose, kick off Sunday shoes, please, Louise, pull me off of my knees. Yeah, it's basically A, 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 A. Like this is not a good candidate as a song. Even though it's got all primary chords, it's only got two chords in it, really, in the, in the thing. And this one's all rhythm. So these are the guys singing and we're not going to watch it, but it's, it's funny because that's a competition song. And yet I watch it and think that's, that's why we have entertainment packages in Sweet Adelines because it's, um, again, it doesn't resemble barbershop. So we know intuitively what barbershop is when we're stretching it. I think we should stretch the style, but I think we also need to pay attention to what the hallmarks are. So read the music category if you feel so inclined or just, you know, take your little checklist that you made in this class. And if we choose to experiment, just think about what, what is it about barbershop that makes it barbershop? What are the elements to preserve and which ones are the ones we can stretch? And for you as competitors, when you're choosing music, just choose intelligently. Understand what the hallmarks are. If you want to take a risk, I encourage you to do it. I love hearing new music out there. Just do it knowing that you're doing it. <laughs> Do it in an informed fashion. And that is how barbershop is done. Fantastic, Karina. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous <laughs> job. And you know, everybody should look into that arranging program as well. I know I oh, am. Yeah. Uh, you can learn yes. a lot more through going through that class. Do, do. Yeah. yeah.
Thank yeah. you so much. You're great. welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I was nervous. <laughs> Teaching from my new region for the first time. That's fun. Ooh, love but it. Happy to be a Cal in region one. I moved oh, into your geography, so. <laughs> well, wait, you're still home in Nova Scotia, right? I'm in Halifax, yes, in Halifax, but technically, because yeah. we don't belong anywhere, we're in region one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, we're lucky then. <laughs> I'm lucky. 